Hello. I'm Bernard Norcott Mahaney. I work at the Blueford branch of the Kansas City Public Library. April is National Poetry Month. During April 2018, I've been reading poems by William Wordsworth. Today's poem is entitled Laodomia. Now, Laodomia was a figure from Greek mythology. Um, she was married to uh, a man named Protesilaus. Protesilaus led one of the um, contingents, uh, one of the Greek contingents fighting at Troy. And he had heard a prophecy that the first side to lose a man in the Trojan War would be the side to be victorious. And on hearing this, Protesilaus had a chance of landing first and basically charging into battle where, of course, because his forces weren't together yet, he was going to be cut down. So this is what happened. Laodomi, his wife, of course, uh, was quite sad to have lost her husband, uh, but the gods took pity on her uh, and gave Protesilaus uh, the opportunity to come briefly, uh, a few hours or so, um, back to his wife uh, for one last visit. So this is Laodomia, and the poem starts with Laodomia speaking. With sacrifice before the rising morn, vows have I made by fruitless hope inspired, and from the infernal gods, mid shades forlorn of night, my slaughtered lord have I required. Celestial pity I again implore, restore him to my sight, great Jove, restore. So speaking, and by fervent love endowed with faith, the suppliant heavenward lifts her hands, while, like the sun emerging from a cloud, her countenance brightens and her eye expands. Her bosom heaves and spreads, her stature grows, and she expects the issue in repose. Oh, terror! What hath she perceived? Oh, joy! What doth she look on? Whom doth she behold? Her hero slain upon the beach of Troy? his vital presence, his corporeal mold? It is, if sense deceive her not, tis he, and a god leads him, winged Mercury. Mild Hermes spake and touched her with his wand that calms all fear. Such grace, grace hath crowned thy prayer, Laodomia, that at Zeus's, Jove's command, thy husband walks the paths of upper air. He comes to tarry with thee three hours space. Accept the gift, behold him face to face. Forth sprang the impassioned queen, her lord to clasp. Again that consummation she essayed, but unsubstantial form eludes her grasp as often as that eager grasp was made. The phantom parts, but parts to reunite and reassume his place before her sight. Protesilaus, lo, thy guide is gone. Confirm, I pray, the vision with thy voice. This is our palace, the yonder is thy throne. Speak, and the floor thou treadst on will rejoice. Not to appall me have the gods bestowed this precious boon and blessed a sad abode. Great Jove, Laodomia, doth not leave his gifts imperfect. Spectre though I be, I am not sent to scare thee or deceive, but in reward of thy fidelity. And something also did my worth obtain, for fearless virtue bringeth boundless gain. Thou knowest the Delphic oracle foretold, that the first Greek who touched the Trojan strand should die. But me the threat could not withhold, a generous cause a victim did demand, and forth I leapt upon the sandy plain, a self-devoted chief by Hector slain. Supreme of heroes, bravest, noblest, best, thy matchless courage I bewail no more, which then with tens of thousands were depressed by doubt, propel thee to the fatal shore. Thou foundst, and I forgive thee, here thou art, a nobler counselor than I, poor heart. But thou, though capable of sternest deed, wert kind as resolute and good as brave. And he whose power restores thee hath decreed thou shouldst elude the malice of the grave. Redundant are thy locks, thy lips as fair as when their breath enriched Thessalian air. No specter greets me, no vain shadow this. Come, blooming hero, place thee by my side. Give on this well-known couch one nuptial kiss to me 
this day a second time thy bride. Jove frowned in heaven. The conscious park eye threw upon those roseate lips a Stygian hue. This visage tells thee that my doom is past. Nor should the change be mourned, even if the joys of sense were able to return as fast and surely as they vanish. Earth destroys those raptures duly, Erebus disdains. Calm pleasures there abide, majestic pains. Be taught, O faithful consort, to control rebellious passion, for the gods approve the depth and not the tumult of the soul, a fervent, not ungovernable love. Thy transports moderate and meekly mourn when I depart, for brief is my sojourn. Ah, wherefore? Did not Hercules by force wrest from the guardian monster of the tomb, Alcestis, a reanimated corpse, given back to dwell on earth in vernal bloom? Medea's spells dispersed the weight of years, and Aeson stood a youth mid youthful peers. The gods to us are merciful, and they yet further may relent, for mightier far than strength of nerve and sinew, or the sway of magic potent over sun and star, is love though oft to agony distressed. And though his favorite seat be feeble woman's breast, but if thou goest, I follow. Peace, he said. She looked upon him and was calmed and cheered. The ghastly color from his lips had fled. In his deportment, shape and mien appeared. Elysian beauty, melancholy grace. Brought from a pensive, though happy place. He spake of love, such love as spirits feel in worlds, whose course is equable and pure, no fears to beat away, no strife to heal, the past unsighed for, and the future sure. Spake of heroic arts in graver mood revived, with finer harmony pursued, of all that is most beauteous imaged there in happier beauty, more pellucid streams, an ampler ether, a diviner air, and fields invested with purporeal gleams, climes which the sun who sheds the brightest day earth knows is all unworthy to survey. Yet there the soul shall enter, which, which hath earned that privilege by virtue. Ill, said he, the end of man's existence I discern, who from ignoble games and revelry could draw when he had parted vain delight, while tears were thy best pastime day and night. And while my youthful peers before my eyes, each hero following his peculiar bent, prepared themselves for glorious enterprise by martial sports, or seated in the tent, chieftains and kings in council were detained. What time the fleet at Aulis lay enchained, the wished for wind was given. I then revolved the oracle upon the silent sea, and if no worthier led the way, resolved that of a thousand vessels, mine should be the foremost prow in pressing to the strand, mine the first blood that tinged the, to the Trojan sand. Yet bitter, oft times bitter was the pang when of thy loss I thought, beloved wife. On thee too fondly did my memory hang, and on the joys we shared in mortal life. The paths which we had trod, these fountains, flowers, my new planned cities, and unfinished towers, but should suspense permit the foe to cry, behold, they tremble, hot, haughty their array, yet of their numbers no one dares to die. In soul I swept the indignity away, old frailties then recurred, but lofty thought, in acts embodied, my deliverance wrought, and thou, though strong in love, art all too weak in reason, in self-government too slow. I counsel thee by fortitude to seek our blessed reunion in the shades below. The invisible world with thee hath sympathized. Be thy affections raised and solemnized. Learn by a mortal yearning to ascend, seeking a higher object. Love was given, encouraged, sanctioned, chiefly for that end. For this the passion to excess was driven, that self might be annulled, her bondage proved the fetters of a dream opposed to love. Aloud she shrieked, for Hermes reappears, round the dear, dear shade she would have clung, tis vain. The hours are past, too brief had, had they been years, and him no mortal effort can detain. Swift toward the realms that know not earthly day, he through the portal takes his silent way, and on the palace floor a lifeless corse she lay. Thus, all in vain, exhorted and reproved, she perished. 
And as for a willful crime by the just gods whom no weak pity moved, was doomed to wear out her appointed time, apart from happy ghosts that gather flowers of blissful quiet mid unfading bowers, yet tears to human suffering are due, and mortal hopes defeated and o'erthrown are mourned by man and not by man alone. As fondly he believes upon the side of Hellespont, such faith was entertained. A knot of spiry trees for ages grew from out the tomb of him for whom she died, and ever when such stature they had gained that Ilium's walls were subject to their view, the trees' tall summits withered at their sight, a constant interchange of growth and blight. That was Laodamia by William Wordsworth.